Matthews will look after them. So I'm going to continue on my mini-series on standing on the promises. Today it's really on patience. And I'll, I want to sort of, I've, I think I've written patience. That's what I've ti- entitled it. Uh, but it's really the power of patience. And, the, and it's talking about the necessity of patience um, to receiving the promises. I believe it's one of the keys. I know we're talking about keys around our necks and God giving us keys to, to, to something that is precious. And I believe that patience is one of the keys that is missing to a lot of us experiencing the promises of God, the manifestation of the promises of God. And I believe you're going to be blessed today. Amen? Father, thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your word. May it come forth the way you desire. Bring to my mind and the things that you want me to say and remove from my mind anything that should not be said in the name of Jesus. Open hearts to receive, ears to hear. In Jesus' name, Lord God, let there be a spirit of revelation, a spirit of wisdom that we will know you that we will know you, that we will know your ways, we will know your word, we will know your will. And I pray, Father, for uh, the the unction of the encourager, the exhorter today to encourage your people to patience. I thank you in advance in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The last two weeks we've been looking at the promises of God and standing on the promises of God and how precious those promises are. The Bible tells in the book of Peter that they are exceedingly great and precious promises. They're exceedingly great, and they are precious promises. So you don't want to mess with the promises of God. There's so much in the promises of God. And unfortunately, a lot of us Christians don't take the promises of God seriously. Some of us don't even know the promises. There's promises concerning every aspect of your life, concerning your career, concerning promotion, concerning your health, concerning marriage, concerning children, your husband, your wife, your family, your parents. You know, there are promises all over. In fact, when God gave the Ten Commandments, there was one commandment that he included with a promise. And that was that we should honor our father and our mother. And he says, if we did this, you will live long and it will be well with you. So God is a God that loves to give promises. Now, we've looked over the past few weeks. I'm not going to summarize everything because it will be too long. But we've seen how um, because promises are broken in the natural, you know, people, husband and wives break promises vows of marriage, for example, or sometimes parents break promises. And because generally there's distrust of promises, we tend to take that also, bring it into our into the realm of our faith with the Lord. But the promises of God are very different from the promises of man. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that should change his mind. What he has said, he will do. So the promises of God are totally different. Now, what is a promise? A promise really It's a declaration that is given by someone that something will or will not be done, okay? It's a declaration. It's a, uh, and in fact, when you make that declaration that something will or will not be done, it gives a certain assurance, you know, or, 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 you know, so that you can have expectation that, that, that is based on that assurance, okay? So a promise is a declaration that is given. God has given so many declarations for us. Some of them are for the work, for the for the here and now, and some of them are for eternity. For example, we know that when we reach, when we die, we'll be present with the Lord, and we'll know we'll meet those folks again. That is for eternity. Amen. But a lot of the promises of God are for the here and now. Praise God. God's promises declare his intentions towards us. They are meant to give us assurance of his will. They are meant to give us assurance of what to expect. That's why he shares his intention. His intentions towards us are good. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans of and not of evil. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. So he shares his intentions through his promises. So he says, that, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Or you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. Or the Lord is my shepherd. These are promises that God gives his beloved to share his intention. To share his intention, his heart, praise God. Now, God wants us to be... Seed. By the way, we are Abraham's seed because of Jesus Christ. He wanted the seed of Abraham to be extremely confident of the promises that were given to Abraham. So God didn't just say the promises, declare the promises. He also swore by himself concerning the promises. And that's because he wants us to be extremely confident confidence. So God wants you confident of his promises. Praise God. So we've seen in the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 that we receive and inherit those promises through faith and then patience. Can you say faith and then patience? 
Now, a lot, have been, a lot has been said about faith. I love preaching on faith. Faith is a raw, raw, raw sort of thing. It's going to stir you up. Adwo was preaching on faith earlier on, you know, and it stirs you up. Patience, not too many people preach on patience. In fact, I realize that I've hardly preached on patience. But the keys are faith and patience. It says we inherit the promises. We should imitate those who, who through faith and patience, inherit the promises of God. Amen. So we're going to look at patience, you know. Now, receiving the, the promise of God is not that difficult for a lot of people. In fact, to be honest with you, receiving the promises of God, it, it takes meditation. So it takes a while sometimes when you, before you receive it. You may hear the promise, okay. You may hear a promise that God, that you are loved of God and that he would never leave you or forsake you. You may hear that. But to receive it, you need to sort of meditate and reflect on that promise for a while. So you really receive it in your spirit. So it takes a while, so, but it's not that, that, that is not the problem area. It's challenging sometimes to receive a promise that you see from God because you think it's unbelievable. Amen? For example, when the promise says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You know, for the first time you think, really? But as you meditate on it, as you reflect on it, as you declare it, as you allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to really open it up to you, you begin to receive it. That is not the real hard part. There's another part of, of the promise of God that is really exciting. That is the manifestation of the promise. How many of you want your promise, the promises of God to be manifest in your life? That is the exciting time when you have the breakthrough, when your loved ones come to know the Lord, when you have healing in your body, when you have that financial uh, uh, deliverance and, and you come to that place of abundance. That's the breakthrough, the manifestation. Amen. You know, then you have that promotion you've been believing for. That's the manifestation. That is the easiest part of the whole process. But then between the receiving the promise and the manifestation is a period where you have to wait. That is the challenge. Waiting. Waiting. Sometimes the wait is short. And many times the wait is long. And the wait is the issue. That is the challenging time. That is a time when we are tested. You see, from the time Abraham received the promise from God that he would have a son through Sarah to the time he had the manifestation of Isaac took some 25 years. It wasn't like he was in the prime of his life. He was 75 years old. So it, it, was must, it must have been very challenging. So he was around 99 when God said, okay, you're, in, in, a, in nine months' time, you're going to have, in a year's time, you're going to have a son. 25 years that it took for, for Abraham to have Isaac. David was anointed king um, by the prophet Samuel when he was between 12 and 16 years old. And he waited till he was 30 years old, 30 years old, before he saw a manifestation. And in between, he was, he was sent to, into the wilderness by Saul. He was pursued. He went through testing and trials. And sometimes you see the prayers of David. He would say, how long, oh Lord, how long? And it's because he's waiting for the promise to come to pass. Amen? Joseph, he had a, res a, re a re revelation, you know, from God that he was going to ha have prominence in his family. And, and that was when he was a young lad. But it was when he was 30 that he experienced it, when he went to Pharaoh and interpreted Pharaoh's dream and he saw the manifestation, the last part of his years, I mean, but later on from the age of 30. He, he was sent to prison. He was accused of, of rape. He went through stuff. That was all the waiting period. Even people like Caleb and Joshua, they had to wait over 40 years, even though it wasn't their fault. They believed that they could take on the giants in the land. All the other spies, the 10 other spies, they did not believe, and they were able to convince the tribe of Israel not to believe, and they said, oh, God has brought us here to kill us. But they said, no, we can take them on. Through no fault of them, it took them an extra 40 years plus before they entered into the promised land. And that's a waiting period. That takes time. From the time you receive a word from God to the manifestation of the word is the time of waiting. And this is when our faith in the promise of God is tested. This is the time that our faith in the promise of the word of God, that is the time that it is tested. You see, the time of waiting is a critical time 
The time of waiting is a critical time. It's a time when we can either let go of the promise of God. It's a time when we can easily get into doubt or unbelief concerning the promise. It's a critical time. From the promise to the manifestation is critical because that's when you can let go of the promise. That's when, it's, uh, that's when you can quit. That's a time when a lot of people even get disillusioned with God, especially when the wait is long. That wait period. But that is the time when we need the key of patience. Can you say patience? You see, what is needed to keep us going during the time is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, patience. That patience is what we need. Patience is critical. It's a critical ingredient. That's why the Bible says we should learn from those who, through faith and patience. It's not just faith. It's not just faith. Faith and patience. Patience inherit the promises. Bible says, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, we do not want you to become lazy, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Notice it doesn't just say faith. A lot of times you're going to need patience. Can you say patience? Now the word patience is an interesting one. Let me start with faith. Faith is really being persuaded about the word of God to the point where you're confident of it where you accept it and you're confident of it and you have a certain assurance. So it's being persuaded, whatever promise God has given you, you are so persuaded about it that you're confident of that promise. And it will express itself in so many ways. It expresses itself by the way you speak. It expresses itself in the actions you take as corresponding to, the, to the, what you believe, okay? That's faith. I'm not going to go too much into that. But patience, the word translated patience from the blue letter Bible it's the word, it, 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 in the Greek, it means steadfastness. It means consistency, endurance, the characteristic of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyal faith, even in the greatest trials and sufferings. It's a patient, enduring, steadfast, sustaining. It means perseverance. Perseverance, you're still going. There's a, I, I saw an interesting definition of patience that I really liked. It says, patience is the ability to be consistently constant. Consistently constant or to be the same all the time, no matter what. I love that definition. Think about it again. Patience is the ability to be, to be consistently constant or to be the same all the time, no matter what happens. So whether it's really, really difficult or not, you're consistently constant. In other words, you still believe God. You still trust God. You still rely on God. You're still confident in God. No matter what. Amen. Okay? Faith is developed by the word of God. Faith is developed by the word of God. And patience is developed through the testing of our faith. I'll say that again. Faith is developed from the word of God. Okay? And patience is developed through the testing of our faith. That's how you develop patience. Now, interesting thing is this. God wants us to develop patience. Now, I know in, we're in an instant society, right? You know, long, not, not too many years ago, you'd have to, to get some information. You have to go to the library. You have to go and look at the index and all that. Right now, you just Google and you can say, who is the president of England or pre president of Ghana? And boom, a voice would tell you instantly, Right? We're in the instant generation. We have microwaves that do everything instantly. And so patience is not one of the attributes that we want to particularly embrace. But God wants us to have the attribute of patience. Why? Because he, that's his nature. And that's the nature of Christ. And that's the nature of the Holy Spirit. And he wants us to be conformed in the image and stature of Christ. The Bible tells us that God is patient in, Matt, in Psalm 86, verse 15. You, O Lord, are full of compassion of, and gracious, long-suffering or patient and abundant in mercy. That's the nature of God. He is patient. Aren't you relieved that God is patient? He's patient. Praise God. God's desire is that you and I be conformed to the image and stature of Christ. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is patience. So you see in Galatians 5.22, by the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and fruitfulness. He wants us to have all those fruits. He wants us to walk in love because he is love. 
He wants us to have joy. He wants us to be gentle. He wants us to be, have peace because that's his nature. That's why when he's, you know, he wants us to be gracious because he is gracious. He wants us to be kind to one another because he's kind. He wants us to love one another because he is love and because he loves us. We love because he first loved us. We forgive because he first forgave us. He is patient with us. So he wants us, he wants to develop patience in us. God's desire is that you and I develop patience. Praise God. The tests and trials we face as we wait for the manifestation of the promises of God are what God uses to develop patience. Patience, the way it's God develops patience in us is through the tests. It's through the trials. It's through tribulation. That's how he develops patience. It's through the wait. That's how he develops patience. Let's look at this scripture here. James chapter 1 verse 2 says, my brethren, count it all joy. I remember I found it so strange that James would tell people to tell, tell us to count it all joy when we fall into various trials. How many of you like trials? Nobody likes trials. But he's saying something here. He's trying to show something, a, a spiritual truth here. He says, count it all joy when you face various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That's what it does. The testing of our faith produces patience. And the pa testing of our faith is during the trial. That's why I say, when you go, you're in a trial, count it all joy because something precious is happening. God is developing patience. Glory to God. And it says, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The testing of our faith can produce all kinds of stuff, folks. It can produce negative stuff. And it can also produce positive stuff. When your, test, your faith is being tested, you can become very, very grumpy. Right? When your, test is, your, your faith is being tested, you can go into unbelief. I don't believe that anymore. If it was so, why hasn't it happened yet? When your faith is being tested, it can produce disillusionment. You are disillusioned. You have tithes and tithes and tithes and tithes. And frankly, you haven't seen the windows of, hope, of heaven open up to you, so forget that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It can produce negative stuff. It can produce fear when you have, your faith is tested. Sometimes you are in a place of fear. Will God really supply all my needs? And you become fearful. My time in, on this earth is limited. Why, aren't I, why am I not fulfilling all that God says? And fear comes in. It can produce negative stuff. Or it can produce what God really wants to produce, which is patience. That's the positive. It can produce perseverance. Or endurance. These are qualities that God wants. Attributes that God wants. The quality of patience doesn't come naturally to us. I remember when I became a Christian. Man, I was on fire. I was on fire um, as a young lad with a lot of hair. Praise God. I had my afro. And yes, I was on fire. And I remember maybe about, about five, six months into, into, um, into my faith, you know. Uh, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, you're not patient. And I thought, no, 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 Lord, you're wrong. I'm patient. I remember that so distinctly. I thought, no, 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 this one, Lord, you, you, you probably made a mistake there. I am patient. And then he took me through a few instances, and I realized, man, am I impatient. It doesn't come naturally to us. It doesn't. It doesn't come naturally. And so God has to work it through the seasons of trials and the seasons of testing. He works this attributes in every single one of us, folks. He doesn't want any one of us to be left out of the attribute of patience. He wants us to exhibit patience. He wants every fruit of the Spirit to be exhibited towards us. That's why he wants us. His goal is that you and I, we look just like Jesus. And one of the qualities of Jesus is patience. Hallelujah. And it's, through, it's primarily through trials and seasons of testings that God develops that attribute of patience. It's interesting, when you look at patience in the Bible, it's often asked, it's, it's quite a lot of instances where it's linked with trials, it's linked with tribulation, it's linked with testing. You know, I'll just give you one here. Romans chapter 5 verse 3 from the Amplified Version says this. Moreover, let us all be full of joy now. Let us exalt and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship produce patience. And unswerving endurance. Notice what produces patient and unswerving endurance. Pressure. Pressure. Affliction. 
hardship. And that is the period of testing. But it produces something that is precious to God. And that is patience. Notice that when we experience when we experience different kinds of trials, the thing that is really being tested is our faith. Now, some, of, some people have trials. You know, that's an interesting thing. Some people are okay in the area of believing God for money. Some people are okay in the believing God for favor. And other people are, are okay in the area of believing God for healing. But we have different types of trials. Sometimes your trial is just, you're just believing that your husband is going to be saved and sit beside you in church. Amen. Or believing that your father is going to be saved. Or believing, and another person that what they're believing for is that the least of us shall be a thousand. Are you here? We have different kinds of trials. Or believing for that promotion can be somebody's trial. You've worked diligently. You've been faithful and you've been overlooked and overlooked and overlooked. Do some injustices and you're just believing God for that promotion or for that breakthrough. There are various kinds of trials. But in the trial, what is being tested is your faith. It's your faith. Your faith is what is being tested. Notice what it says in James 1, 2 again. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Verse 3 says, knowing that the testing of your faith, that is what is being tested, your faith. So you may be in a trial right now, and you think, oh man, what's happening to me? What is really happening is your faith is being tested. It's being tested. Notice what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested. Your faith is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. And then it says this, though your faith is far more precious than gold. You see, most Christians of us don't realize how important our faith is. It's more precious than money. It's more precious than gold. But the Bible says that it is being tested. And so in that trial, whatever trial you're in, what is being tested is your faith. I want you to turn to somebody and say, it is just a test. It's just a test. Your faith is being tested. You see, Bible faith is based on God's word or God's promises and the corresponding actions of, of what we are doing, right? So it is our faith in what God has said that is being tested. Our faith in what God has said that is being tested. Our faith in what we are saying is being tested. Because the Bible says faith is, well, the spirit of faith is, is believing and speaking. So what is being tested is our believing. What we are really persuaded about is being tested. What we are declaring is being tested. Our actions, the Bible makes it clear that faith is also actions. Our actions are being tested. Are they in correspondence with the will of God? That is all that is being tested. That is why I say that it is a test. You are going through a trial. It's a test. Do you really believe that promise from God? The promise that you've been holding on to, do you really believe it? During the season of waiting, that's when it gets difficult. Folks, don't feel bad when sometimes you, you, you let go of the promise so long as you come back to the promise. Look at Abraham and Sarah. After a season, I said, man, this is not working. Hagar is quite a nice looking woman. Why don't you have the child through Hagar? Right? Right? That's what he did. But then he had to go back and believe God because God commends him as a, as a man of faith. And we are the, he's a father of faith. Praise God. And when you look at Romans chapter 4, the Bible says, Abraham, in hope, against all hope, in hope, believed. So he came to that place where he believed God, where he began to stand on the promise of God. The thing that is being tested is your faith, what you really believe, what you're saying. Your actions, do they correspond to the promise of God? That is what is being tested. That is why it says, it is being, uh, well, your, your faith will, um, says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Now, what is the goal of developing patience or endurance? Now, this is, this is quite interesting because I want you to see what God's goal is. Why does he take us through trials and testing? Why does he sometimes wait for a long time before the promise is, manif is manifested? Why this waiting season? Why? And it's not just waiting for the promise. Sometimes you go through a test anyway. You go through a trial. But he produces this patience. Why is it important? Because this patience, the goal of developing patience and endurance is spiritual maturity. That is it. God wants mature believers. What did Jesus say? Make disciples of the nations, not just converts, teaching them to obey what I have commanded. 
Amen? God is looking for us to be conformed to the image and stature of Christ. He wants you after 20 years of being a Christian to look more like Christ than, than, than at the beginning. He doesn't want you in spiritual diapers when you are 20 years a Christian. He wants you to grow and develop maturity. Amen. Notice what it says in 1 James chapter 1, verse 3 from the New Living Translation. For you know that when your faith is tested, when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. And then it says in verse 4, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete. That word perfect is really you'll be mature and complete. God's goal is that you become mature. So even though he's, you know, I'm sure God doesn't have a smile grinning when you're going through the fire. I'm sure it hurts him just as much. But he's seeing that he wants to develop something precious, patience and endurance in you. <laughs> Amen. He wants to develop maturity. He wants you and I to be mature. Notice what it says in Romans chapter 5 verse 4. Endurance, that is fortitude, develops maturity of character. Approved faith and tried integrity. And character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Maturity, that's his goal. Endurance produces maturity. That's why I say it's a test. And the test is to bring out that patient endurance, that perseverance, that steadfastness in us. Are you getting something so far? Now, during that time of testing, that's the time when we can begin to think, oh, God has forgotten about me. You rejoice when somebody comes and gives us testimony or a breakthrough, but you've gone through a long period of time. You rejoice when somebody else is getting married. But man, you've been waiting for a while. Amen? And then you think God has forgotten you. No, 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 no. He has not forgotten you. He cannot forget you. He cannot forsake you. During the time of testing is when we can easily think that God has not noticed what we are doing. Sometimes you think you've tithed and tithed and given and given and shown kindness to so many people and you're not seeing that harvest in your life of kindness or have had, uh, uh, the harvest of financial blessing. You know, you're not, it's not, you're not experiencing anything. God, don't you notice, folks, God has not forgotten you. In fact, when you go back to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, verse 12 is where it tells us, by faith and patience we inherit the promise. Verse 10 says this, God is not unjust. Can you repeat that with me? God is not unjust. He says he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him. He will not forget your work and your love. He doesn't forget your service. He doesn't forget the things you do. Your faithfulness in, in ushering or your faithfulness in sweeping and cleaning. Your, the things that people don't see. He doesn't forget it. He doesn't, see, he, he doesn't forget your faithfulness. He doesn't forget your worship. Glory to God. He doesn't forget your devotion and your love and the fact that Every morning or every evening, you want to cut time with him and spend it quiet. You know, you have a quiet time where you just listen to him and you speak to him. He doesn't forget all of that. It's not unjust. Amen. God is not unjust. He's not unfaithful. He's not, he's not unfair. He will not forget. So every work you do, God sees it. And you know what? The Bible encourages us to keep going because God hasn't forgotten. He says, you keep going, okay? So that, my next point is, don't be slack. Press on. Look to somebody and say, don't be slack. Press on. Say, don't be slack. Press on. You see, as we wait for the promises of God, it becomes tempting to back off, to become slack, to stop believing, to stop our declaration, to stop coming for prayer meetings. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We back off. We slack. We become lazy. Our actions, you know, we stop tithing. We stop giving. We stop loving. We stop being patient, with, you know, showing kindness to people, you know, because they take us for granted. How many of you have been there? I've definitely been there, you know, but, but that's not the time. Notice what it says in verse 11 of Hebrews 6. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end. That is of working and loving God. We want you to keep at it. Don't be slack. Don't be lazy. Be diligent. Keep at it. And it says, so that what you hope for may be fully realized. You see, the hope is the expectation of the best of God. What God promises is what we are hoping in. We are believing God for that. Amen. 
And he's saying, be diligent. Keep on doing the things that please God. Keep on showing him your love. Keep on being what God wants you to be. For in due season, you receive. That's why I said, do not be um, uh, weary in well-doing. But in due season, you will receive the reward. Notice what it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 12. 12, verse 12. Never be la lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. It says rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble, in trial. It says keep on praying. Don't slack. Press on. Don't slack. Press on. You see, God wants you and I to be imitators of those who learned to receive the promises of God through faith and patience. Through faith and patience. I believe a lot of you have worked up your faith. You've worked at your faith. You've worked at your believing. You've gone to the word. You've, you've meditated on the word. You've reflected on the word. You've done some declarations. Some of you are in that place. I believe the ingredient that is missing is that patience. Patience. Hebrews 10, uh, Hebrews 6, 12. We do not want you to become lazy, but imitate. In other words, copy the example of those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Through faith and patience inherits those, uh, what has been promised. You see, God wants you and I to stay confident and to keep trusting him. Glory to God. He wants us to be confident Notice what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Don't throw it away, folks. Remember the great reward it brings you. I said, patient endurance is what you need now. That's the message for a lot of us. Patient endurance is what you need now. Patient endurance is what you need now. So that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Patience and endurance is what you need. Don't give up. Patience and endurance is what you need. Notice what it says in Luke 21, 19 from the Amplified. By your steadfastness and patient endurance, you shall win the true life of your souls. Glory to God. By your steadfastness and patient endurance, you are destined to win. Isn't that good news? That's why you have to allow patience to be developed in you. <laughs> that's, how you have to, that's why you have to allow patience to be developed inside of you. Amen. So I'm going to end with these two verses. Hebrews 12, 12 1 says, therefore, we also, in fact, the, 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 the note I have is this. Victory is yours so long as you do not lose focus on the promise. Victory is yours so long as you do not lose focus on the promise. Victory is yours so long as you do not lose focus on the promise. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, notice that in Hebrews chapter 11, that's the, the chapter of faith, where it talks about so many men and women of faith, you know, who, who did exploits for God, and God commended them, and, and it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So it's, it's a great faith chapter. And notice what it says, because of that, therefore, we have such a crowd of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and then notice what he said, and let us run with endurance, with endurance, with patience. Let us run the race that is set before us. Folks, there's a race that is set before you. My race is different from your race. Run your race. Run your race. Okay, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Now, this is the example that... The, the writer of Hebrews is saying, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So now it's talking about faith. It's talking about Jesus being the author of faith and the finisher of faith. But it's not now sort of showing us the example of Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy set before him? God had promised that on the third day he'll be raised again and that he'll be seated up at the right-hand side of the Father. Glory to God. God had promised him that he would have sons and, and daughters by his death, with that grain of seed falling to the ground, there would be a harvest of souls. That's you and I. That was the promise. That was the promise set before Jesus. And it says this, looking to Jesus, and says this, the author and finisher said, who for the joy that was set before him, because of that, he endured the cross. 
He endured it. The cross. Despising the shame. And has, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So now he's experiencing the promise. Glory to God. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? What the Bible is trying, what the Lord is trying to say to us is that look, run the race of the, 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 and, 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 and make sure you're enduring. You're, you're running with perseverance. You're running with patience. You know, it says, and remember, put in focus that promise. Put it in focus. Don't lose sight of it. Don't slack with that promise. Let it be your focus because seeing that focus will help you to endure the cross, the challenge, the trial, the testing. Amen. So, for example, for somebody who loves to witness and, and share Christ in a, in a culture that now becomes more and more intolerant, the promise is that there is a reward for soul winners. So because of that, endure the cross. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, what, what is the promise that you are believing God for? Keep your eye on that promise. Let it be your focus and endure whatever testing and challenge that you have to go through. That is what God is saying to us. Now, Jesus used different strategies. And I just want to mention one. Remember when Jesus was tested in the wilderness for 40 days when he was without food. And the devil came. And, the, you know, the devil speaks to us. And, and you shouldn't be surprised that the devil will speak to you through your mind. Because the devil even spoke to Jesus. And he came and spoke to Jesus. And each time during this time of testing, what did Jesus do? He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. One of the things that we always need to go back to is the word of God and the promise of God. Oh, church, I'm here to encourage you. My encouragement to you is that allow patience to develop its perfect work in you. My encouragement to you is that run the race with endurance and with patience. Be steadfast. Be consistently constant all the time, no matter what. Be consistent in your declaration. Be consistent in your actions. Be consistent in doing the will of God. Even Jesus, when he was in Gethsemane and, and he was pressured and he felt troubled in his, in his spirit, Bible says that he said, not my will, but your will be done. Be consistent in doing the will of the Father. Amen? And in due season, you will obtain the promise. Hebrews 6.15 says, after he had patiently endured, talking about Abraham, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Glory to God. I'm here to tell you that after you patiently endure, you will obtain the promise. That promise is yours. It has your name written on it. From the time you receive the promise to the time you experience the manifestation of the promise is a time of waiting and a time of testing. And God is testing your faith. And he wants patience to arise and develop in the inside of you. So allow God's patience to be developed inside of you. Because that is the ingredient you need to obtain the promise. Can I hear a good amen?